Hello, my name is Malcolm Skinner and I'm a solicitor in the LexisNexis Private Client PSL team. Uh, today I'm joined by Janet Patterson of Charter Tax Consulting to discuss uh, Budget 2015 and in particular effective IHT real estate planning. Welcome Janet. Thank you. Uh, perhaps firstly you could outline uh, the current rules for inheritance tax. Um, in relation to UK residential property, the yes. key things to really understand are that there are two distinct categories. So first of all, for individuals domiciled in the UK, um, their worldwide estate is charged to inheritance tax when they die. Mm -hmm. for, and that includes as well, for example, if they've settled a trust, then the trust assets will also be subject to the full inheritance tax regime for trusts which includes the tenure charge, exit charges, and actually also charges on setting up the trust. Mm. The other category we have are individuals domiciled outside of the UK. For those categories of individuals, they're only charged to inheritance tax to the extent that they have UK situs assets. So for example, direct ownership of UK real mm. estate. Similarly, to the extent that they settle trusts, those trusts are only within the IHT regime applicable to trusts, to the extent that the trustees directly hold UK site as property. So a, um, historically a common planning technique would be for non-DOMs to make sure that to the extent that they want to own UK residential property, they'd do so through a company registered outside of the mm. UK. So in fact what they then have is shares in an offshore company rather than direct ownership of UK mm. residential property. Mm and then that can be a means to take them outside of the UK inheritance tax net. Okay. Obviously we have Budget 15, what has happened to these rules? So this is a very big issue um, and of course the summer 2015 announcements were then updated with some announcements mm. on um, 18th of August 2016. Essentially the idea is that the government want to see offshore companies owning UK real estate, specifically residential property, mm. as being effectively transparent for inheritance tax purposes. Um, the way they're planning to do this is by way of a technical change to the excluded property rules to say that to the extent that there is an um, entity that owns UK residential property, then while otherwise that entity might have um, been within the excluded property rules, i.e. so that if a non-DOM owns, say, shares in an offshore company, then they still had a non-UK situs asset, it's excluded from the IHT regime. Mm -hmm. um, going forward, to the extent that the value of the entity, i.e. the shares in the offshore company, can be said to be deriving from UK residential property, then actually that value will find itself within the inheritance tax net going forward. Um, and that will apply for um, non-DOMs um, indirectly owning UK residential real estate, uh, as well as to offshore trustees. Okay, so how can we sidestep all this? Good question, um, without an equally good answer. <laughs> um, the, prop, the, um, the government have been very sensible from the point of view that um, they're deliberately trying to um, draft the rules such that you can't sidestep it. Right. Um, currently, there's very little likely planning. The routes are probably going to be around um, insurance options to say, well, okay, if there is an inheritance tax charge, at least can we have an insurance policy in place? Mm. The other option really is family ownership of property and family par partnerships and the like. And there you're not taking the property value outside of the inheritance tax net per se, but what you are doing is splitting the property value, the property ownership, through different family members. Mm. So you're mitigating your risk that one of those family members die and creates a charge to inheritance tax. Plus you're utilising their middle rate bans for inheritance tax purposes. More to the point, I suppose, when we're looking at this is we have these rules, how actually are they going to be enforced? Another very good question, um, which is something that in particular um, offshore 
trustees, um, offshore corporate services providers are quite worried about. Mm. So the current proposals are twofold. The first part is to um, give HMRC the power to um, apply charge over UK residential property. So for example, if um, that property sale takes place and it transpires that there's a historic position whereby inheritance tax should have been paid on the property but it hasn't been, then HMRC are seeking to grant powers to get a charge over that property even after it's actually been purchased by a third party purchaser. Really? Exactly. So, so potentially that's very worrying yes. for the property market. Yes. Um, I'm lucky enough to be on the consultation group with HMRC on this. Um, we're campaigning very strongly to say that, well, when you're buying a property, certainty is key. Mm. So yes, we can see that the government want to take that as an opportunity to make sure that any inheritance tax due has in fact been paid, mm. but let's at least have a proper due diligence um, scheme. So let's agree as an industry what checks ought to be made to make sure whether the inheritance tax paid has been paid historically. Mm. Um, agree that at an industry level and if those checks have been made then it shouldn't be a risk for the purchaser that they might get stumped with the inheritance tax bill. The yeah. other part of it um, is that there's a possibility that the directors of the offshore companies involved might end up with a personal liability if there's inheritance tax paid that, sorry, inheritance tax that should have been paid mm. that hasn't. Again of course you can imagine the industry isn't best pleased at that idea. Um, mm. So hopefully, and the government consultation groups are quite sensible, so hopefully um, we'll come out with them with a working proposal for this that will suit government requirements, but also be sensible in practice. One can but hope. We hope. <laughs> Sorry, I'm cynical. <laughs> um, obviously, over the years we've thought, <clears throat> well, we'll go for a corporate structure. That's the way forward, that's mm -hmm. the way we can avoid all the problems. Do I assume from what you're saying this is no longer the way forward and that perhaps people thinking of owning property in that way shouldn't be doing this? So it depends really what they're doing with the property. There's most likely going to be two distinct camps going forward. Mm. Um, there'll be effectively buy-to-let situations mm. where the um, individual wants to acquire UK real estate um, specifically for the purposes of letting it out. In that situation, actually, for income tax reasons, it may well still make sense to have a offshore company purchase a property mm. and let it out, um, even though for inheritance tax purposes there's no benefit mm. to it. Um, otherwise, actually, a lesser property has been either developed or commercially let, then you'll be into the realms of having the ATED charge, the annual tax and envelope dwellings. So from that point of view, there's absolutely no sense to be paying the ATED charge, <laughs> as well as possibly paying the inheritance tax yeah, charge quite. later. Um, so that's where personal ownership or family ownership really is likely to be the way forward. Okay. Well, that's, that's fascinating. Janet, thank you very much. Pleasure. I'm very grateful. Thank you.